I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out, righteousness. Let me do a couple of things right here that I think that are important that the Lord has put this on my heart since uh, we were in the pulpit on Saturday to talk to you about the guilt trip. That is to say that we have been teaching now that the great apostle Peter has stated in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 10, that it is through the process of suffering that brings us to make a decision to go full-throated, to go completely sold out for Jesus. And when that happens, when you are spiritually uh, sold out for Jesus, when you are completely, there's nothing ever in the history or the future or the past or uh, there's nothing that will ever deter you uh, from your full service and dedication to Jesus. Now, one of the things that Peter realized is that when he followed Jesus initially, his brother Andrew found Jesus first and then went and got Peter. And then Peter became the chief apostle of the group that Peter realized he had to give up everything. He gave up fishing with, on his daddy's boat. He gave, really, Peter was married or estranged from his wife, uh, and, and he had to walk away. And I'm not telling anybody to give up your wife. I think they had been separated previously. But Peter knew that you had to give up everything. And then in the course of events, after three years of walking with Jesus, Jesus was tried by the Sanhedrin, by the Pharisees there one night, accusing him of blasphemy where he was later brought to Pilate and sentenced to death to be crucified. And Peter did not stand with him. There was something about Peter's commitment that he didn't, he didn't go the last mile. He went up to the door, but he didn't go in. And he denied the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we all know that. We all know that. But what I want to say to you is that Peter had a guilt trip. And that's why I want to talk to you right now about many of you in terms of your full commitment. Many of you have made the full commitment, but there is a spiritual dynamic that the devil is using that I'm going to expose right here, right now, is that the devil is trying to make you feel guilty for the things that you did prior to your commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ and even after your commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a result of that, you don't feel fully worthy. You don't feel fully committed. You don't feel perfect because you got a dirty, dirty past. Now, we all do. I'm not here arguing with you. I'm not here trying to make you feel bad. I'm not here to try to tear jerk you. We all have got a dirty past. Even people with, with pristine records have got a dirty past, whether they, Jesus said, listen, he said, it's one thing to have a, to have a sexual uh, event with, with a woman that's, that's, that you're not married to or that's married to somebody else. That's called adultery. But Jesus said, wait a minute, it goes further than that. If you just look at a woman, you still got an adulterous, dirty past. But there are a lot of people that uh, are suffering from a guilt trip, and Jesus has sent me here today to wipe it out. Jesus sent me here today to rebuke you walking in guilt all these years. Get rid of it. The Lord sent me here to get rid of it. Get rid of it. That guilt. Now, you, you did those things. And here's another thing. This one will kill you. Here's another thing. You know, if you had had a good, strong, don't take tea for the fever, righteous preacher like Pastor Manning early on in your life and your family and your friends and everybody had had a strong pastor like Pastor Manning, not only strong in terms of his rebuke, his strength, his call to righteousness, but a vision to give you a promise and a hope so you wouldn't have gone down those lines of doing all those things that have now brought you to a, 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 a guilt trip where you've got a lot of ugly things that went on in the back of your, your mind. So a couple of things that this is a little bit self-serving, but I'm going to do it anyway. You ought to give God the thanks that you're now no pastor man. But the Lord is, that's me. The Lord has sent me here to tell you now, you got to, you got to let go of that guilt. And here's what you got to do. If, if the guilt is related to somebody that you harmed or you injured, somebody that you harmed or you injured, here's what you need to do. If possible, you have to try to reconcile with them. Now, people are not always amenable to reconciliation, and they may consider it a weakness or some sort of con. But if you feel that you can, try to straighten that out 
through going to your brother and seeking to be forgiven, uh, then do that. That is not the first choice. That is not my first recommendation. I'm telling you that's possible. If you believe it's possible, I'm not recommending that you got absolutely do that. But what you can do is what I did. You can get down on your knees before Jesus Christ, Almighty God, the Son of God. You can get down on your knees and tell God that you are sorry and tell him to fix it for you. Tell Jesus that you're sorry for what you did. Now, I know you say, well, Pastor, man, I've already done that. Well, look, why are you talking back to me? You said you've already done it, but you still feel guilty. You haven't been clean yet. I'm telling you now that you need to do it in a way that's going to clean you up so you won't be walking in that guilt anymore. Tell the Lord that you're sorry. Now, you don't have to go to the person. You don't have to go to the person, but you can go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I'm, and, and here's, what, here's what I want. Here's what, you, here's what I've done, and I, I'm going to suggest you do it. I'm going to suggest that you say to the Lord, Lord, you know of all things. And um, if somehow or another the things that you did you were 70% guilty of it, and the, the person you did it to was 30% guilty, then they bear some blame too. But I'm not here to, you're not here to beat up on them. You're not here to beat up on them. Don't you go beating up on nobody. That's not what you're going to do. But what you're going to do is this, is you're going to ask the Lord to bless them. And for the, for the next, I don't know, 70 days, for the next 70 days, every time you pray, pray for them. And every time you pray, pray a blessing for them. Amen? Now, that's going to clean you. I'm sorry, for the next 49 days. I'm thinking about something else. The next 49 days to the 50th day, the next 49 days, every time you pray over the next 49 days, and make sure you pray every day for the next 49, ask God to bless them. Ask God to bless them better than he's blessed you. That's right. And one of the things that might happen is that when you ask God to bless them, now you want to get rid of this guilt trip, is that right? You ask God to bless them the way he's blessed you, they may even start listening to me and uh, preach righteousness because, you know, listening to me is a blessing. Is that right? Oh, it is. It's a, it's a blessing. But that's what I did in the Brooklyn House of Detention. And, uh, and, I, and, and right to this very day, you can do it more than 49 days. But I think after 49 days of asking God to bless them and pouring out your heart to help them, you know, and realize you did wrong, uh, in every circumstance you do that for 49 days, you're going to be free of that guilt. You're going to be free of that. The devil may try to bring it back, but you're going to be free of that. And moreover, you're going to help them because they need your help. Because where you're at now, they're not there. They're going to they're need your help. Now, I've got to go, uh, but I want to give a shout out to everybody giving. Wanted to, you know, talk about uh, Sister Lynette White and everything. I'll have more to say about that. I'm kind of rushed here uh, today because I want to dip into the, uh, the January 6th hearings. So uh, let's go to Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, give us 49 days of praying for every. Thing that has brought guilt into our life until that guilt is completely removed and we can celebrate the jubilee of all the guilt, of all the wrong. And there'll be 49 prayers of blessings and blessings on those who may be uh, injured by our activity that we might be fully committed and we will no longer carry that guilt. In the name of Jesus, give people, listen to me, the power to pray, to pray and be released and delivered. In your name I pray, hallelujah, amen.